On the bottom left, this is a spot where you can either call or 3-bet. I elected to call here mainly because GHTH is in the big blind, and I want to have hands like this in my range against him. Again, I think he's probably one of the better players at these stakes just because I used to play 1020 with him like two months ago or something. Uh, so I think he's going to squeeze too much here. I think he's going to assume that my hand range in a spot like this is not too many hands that want to continue. I'm going to have a lot of just like weaker Broadway hands and suit connectors and stuff like that. So uh, the cutoff opens to four. I flat here. Then I think he squeezes to like 20 or maybe a little bit smaller, like 18 or 16. So he puts in like 20, 15 to 20 big blinds, and then I have ace-queen, and it folds around to me, and I just have a really easy shove that's super plus EV if you do the math on it. So I don't three-bet this guy, and actually I don't think just flatting with his hand can ever really be too bad anyway. You keep in all the hands that you dominate, and you're in position with deep stacks if it just gets folded around. So there's nothing wrong with that. So it checks around at Chubbs, who checks to me. All right, so I don't think that Chubbs is probably ever checking an over pair here. I think he's almost always going to bet it. So I basically think I'm heads up with Skibble at this point. This guy Skibble just over called. Uh, so he could easily have a lot of just like suited ace x hands he could have hands like queen jack suited he could have mid pairs there's a lot of stuff that he could have here um so i'm i'm basically like i'm basically considering myself to be in a heads up pot here with skibble i'm just disregarding this guy to my right you know if he were if I were playing higher stakes or if it were a trickier player like a known good player i would not consider myself heads up here but against your average 50 cent dollar grinder, I think, that, or just your average 50 cent dollar recreational player. I think when he checks there, uh, he's always folding. So I'm heads up against Skibble. Uh, checking is obviously profitable here because uh, I have the best hand usually, and we can just take it to showdown occasionally, or if a queen or an ace hits on the turn, then I'm going to have the best hand almost always. So checking here is fine. I like to bet half pot just because there are two other hands out there against me and I have the best hand here so much that uh, the, the turn is gonna uh, be a turn that I can't continue on against a bet a decent amount of the time and up against two players the turn is gonna get bet or I'm gonna get sucked out on sometimes so I think I I think betting really small here is fine like half of the pot and so I hope about like I think about like six okay 675 and a 1235 is about half pot um, so since we're assuming that Chubbs is folding, I think Skibble is just folding here with hands like Queen-10 suited most of the time, and calling with a hand like 5-5 five, five or 4-4, four, four, or even a hand like, you know, even small over pairs. I don't think he ever has a big over pair. He squeezes with big over pairs preflop. So he he's just going to check call me with a hand like sevens, and I can win the pot against sevens on later streets. Uh, depending on how the board develops, I can suck out on pocket sevens. I can barrel them off of it. Um, so I think I'm just picking up the hand here a lot, and I don't have to risk much to do it, since n since everyone's ranges are so weak. I get check raised here, which doesn't make any sense. The only hands that I believe that this guy can have here that will check raise me are pocket threes, seven six suited, and six five suited. He's on two tables with me. He's playing reasonable stats. So he's probably like a standard tag grinder. So I think a standard tag grinder might even fold a hand like at 100 NL, a tight player might even fold hands like 6-7 suited or 6-5 suited. Um, I wouldn't, but I don't think that everyone's going to overcall with those hands. So really he's representing an insanely narrow range of hands here. I don't think he would ever do this with like pocket eights. I think he just check calls. Um, so when he check raises me here, he's either got a super duper nutted hand or he's just on total air and he's, you know, just got two over cards and is just check raising me trying to rep a six because it checked to me on the button and I was last to act. So he just thinks I'm going to stab with a ton of my range, which is true. So therefore, since I'm stabbing so wide here on the button, he should just check raise me. And that's fine. 
and that works against a lot of people. But if you're playing against someone who's hand reading and who's not afraid to go with a read and uh, is not going to let you get away with stuff like this, then it's not as good. So I think that his range here is a super duper nutted hand, or four f a hand like obviously open at a straight draw, four five suited if he does play that, uh, and then just a ton, a ton, a ton of air. So I, I'm not going to believe this. And I'm going to call. Um, I like calling better than doing anything else because if he has 4-5 and I just 3-bet him, he might just decide to ship it in and say, screw this guy. He wouldn't 3-bet a 6 on this flop. He would just call. And that's true. I wouldn't 3-bet probably with a 6. I would just call. So I'm playing my hand in a manner that's consistent with having a 6. Um... And also, I don't give him an opportunity to rebluff me or just ship in a semi-bluff like 4 or 5. So the turn's an 8, which doesn't change anything. And sky bet's 30. Um, and again, I, I still think that his range is just so full of air. Uh, I think he can have so many just overcard hands here. So much stuff that is just not having any part of this board. Um, so I think it's a fairly straightforward call on the turn as well. Uh, this might look insane to some people, but be if like be honest with yourself about your range and his spot. Like what are you doing with pocket seven in a spot? You're not playing your hand like that. What are you doing with uh, basically, what hands are you at, that are real hands are you actually playing this way? And there's just not too many. So it just leads me to believe that he is full of it a lot. And the, the river is a five, which is kind of interesting because I only have like 40% of the pot left. I have 46 into 110. Um, so given that I think that he has air a lot here, uh, I could just decide to check it down. The only problem is a hand like pocket deuces or pocket fours could have just check raised the flop just because they thought their hand was good and then and wanted me to just fold and didn't want to have to make any tough decisions and then just randomly started bluffing with it. Also, if he was semi-bluffing with 5-4, he's now picked up a pair. And my hand looks, I mean, the board is rainbow on the turn. 4-5 is the only draw out there, and frankly, I probably wouldn't be calling with it on the turn too often. Probably would just jam 4-5 on the turn, because I think he would just bet fold the turn a lot. So my hand, from his perspective, has to look like 6-X, or just some really strong hand. There's, like, no draws that I can have at this point. It's only made hands that I can have here. So I decided to jam the river because I don't think he's going to check call it with a hand like 4-5 or pocket deuces, and it would be just such a tragedy if I made a, a good read and a good play, and uh, then ended up checking it down here, and he has something that slightly beats me, like 5-4 here. Um, so I decided to ship it in here, because I think it's he's folding almost his... I think he's probably folding his entire range if I shove here. I just don't see what hand he's going to check raise the flop, bet the turn, and then check call the river with. I just don't see it. I don't. I mean, I can't think of a hand that would do that. So I decide to send it in, and he folds pretty quickly.